If you've just gotten your Galaxy S23 Ultra, you may be feeling how I feel like a lot of people are probably feeling with a phone that can do so much and is so feature rich and complicated. You may be feeling a little overwhelmed and a little bit confused. So in this video, I'm going to try to help with that by giving you about 20 tips and tricks to try to help you enjoy your experience with your brand new S23 Ultra. So I'm just going to jump straight into this and start running through some of these uh, little tips that, again, are meant to improve your experience with this device. So the first one that we're going to look at that I really, really like and I think is really cool is a new feature that is in the Gallery app. Now, a lot of us may be uh, prone to just using Google Photos, but I would actually encourage you to use the built-in Gallery app because of this feature. So this is a picture of my Australian Shepherd Rose, and what we're going to do in this image is very, very cool. All we're going to do is we're going to press and hold on her, and you see what just happened here. It has now cut her out from this picture. You can now copy this, paste it elsewhere, just send it someplace else, and you can save it as its own image, which I've already done, and what you have is her cut out with no background. And you can do this with pretty much anything. Let's try it here with this photo of my guitar. Will that work? Yes, it pulled it out. Now you can see there, it did grab my tripod out of the background as well. So that might require a little bit of work afterwards. But generally speaking, it's going to do a pretty good job of grabbing whatever that is you're touching, pulling it out of the image, and you can actually create your own stickers by doing this. So let's go into uh, this image here, which is a macro shot. We're going to click on edit. And now we can go into, click on the little smiley face down here, click on stickers, go to your gallery and click on the plus button. And you can then add that cutout image as its own sticker. Well, what can you do with that? You can grab that image, you can resize it, drag it around, do whatever you want to make some crazy looking image using the sticker you just created with the gallery app. I really like this feature. Yes, they did lift it from the iPhone. No, I don't care. It's still fun. We're going to have to speed up because I have too many of these things to go as slowly as I've just been going. So what about one hand in mode? Okay, this is a very large device, probably hard to reach the top of the screen. And there are ways to get around this. So what you're going to do is go into your settings. And the simple way to do this is just to search for one hand in mode. Click on that and it should highlight it there. One hand in mode. Let's turn that on. And there is a gesture. All you have to do is swipe down on the bottom of the screen like that. And it will shrink down into a corner, which does make it a lot easier to one hand. If you want to get out of one handed mode, simply click anywhere or touch anywhere outside that space and it should expand back out. Here's an annoying one. By default, the power button, if you hold it, instead of bringing up your power menu like this, it's going to try and fire up Bixby. No one wants Bixby. Let's get rid of it. Same thing, go into your settings. This time we're going to search for side key. Let's click on that, press and hold. We're going to change that now to power off menu. Bye bye Bixby. Now you may have noticed up here in this corner, it's probably really hard to see. There's this really fine white line over there. What that is, if you swipe out on it, you get this little drawer that pops out. And what this is for is to be able to quickly switch apps or to quickly multitask apps. A lot of people don't know about this because it's not really talked about that much, but let's use it, okay? We're gonna click on YouTube. Hey, guess what? We've now launched YouTube. Let's pull it back out, and now we're gonna actually go a step further and click on our app drawer. We're gonna grab Twitter. We're gonna long press it. We're gonna drag it down to the bottom, and now we have uh, two apps open at once. This is very, very useful. But let's say you really like this workflow, YouTube and Twitter. I don't know why you would, but maybe you do. Let's click on the little three dots in the middle. Not only can you now flip them, but you can also save it. Add app pair to home screen or to apps edge panels. What that's going to do is it's going to put a shortcut to that either in either one of those options. And next time you click on it, it will launch those two apps exactly as you have them right now. This is very, very useful. I tend to think that the S23 Ultra has a pretty good set of stereo speakers, but there is a way to make them sound even better. This time we're going to scroll down to sounds and vibration, and then we're going to scroll down to sound quality and effects. Dolby Atmos should be probably turned on. Atmos for gaming should probably be turned on. You can also go in and make your own custom equalizer if you want to do that or change between the options that they have for you there. Any of these things is going to help improve the already pretty good audio quality on this device. Moving right along here, the camera app is very good and obviously the camera quality is very good on this device, but one complaint a lot of people have 
is with shutter lag. What this is, is basically whenever you open up the camera app, the amount of time between actually hitting the shutter button and the photo being taken. Some people feel like it's a little bit slow in certain situations. Well, something you can do to combat this is to use an application called Good Lock and inside Good Lock Camera Assistant. So first we need to go to the Galaxy Store and we need to search for Good Lock. Very, very surprising, I know. Let's go ahead and install that once it is installed. We can open it up. Now inside Good Lock, there are modules. You're gonna look for under the Life Up uh, portion. So there's Make Up and Life Up. Under Life Up, look for Camera Assistant and there's probably gonna be a download button there. Click on that and let that download. Once you're inside this, there are some options you can use. The simplest one is just to toggle this, quick tap shutter. Take pictures as soon as your finger touches the shutter button instead of when you lift off. You can still swipe or press and hold the shutter button to capture GIFs, burst shots, and videos, but picture, but, but a picture will be taken too. So this is just gonna speed things up a little bit just by changing the behavior. You can also go into capture speed and change the priority, prioritize quality, balance it or prioritize speed. Now, of course, if you prioritize speed, yes, the photo will be taken faster, but the picture might not look quite as good. Play with these settings and determine what is the best balance for you. Kind of going back to talking about multitasking earlier, let's go back into the settings again, and this time let's scroll down and look for advanced features and then labs. You're gonna to wanna to turn on multi-window for all apps, in particular if you are a multitasker because this is going to allow, it's pretty straightforward, it allows every app, apps that don't normally let you do split window like Instagram will now allow you to do split window. Another cool one to turn on is swipe for split screen. So what this does is it allows you to do a two finger swipe from the bottom and what that's gonna do then is show you an app drawer that you can then go into and then select on an app to have split screen. It makes that multitasking just a little bit quicker than it was before. Maybe you like using your S Pen and in particular, those air gestures. They are pretty cool. Let's pop out the S Pen here and I will show you what I mean. Basically, if you hold down the button, you can do all sorts of different gestures like this one, which should take a screenshot there we go. And then you can start writing on top of that screen. That is an example of an air gesture. However, you may notice that when you first pull the thing out, it didn't work the first time. And the reason for that is because it has to connect after it is pulled out. So let's go into our settings. Let's go back to advanced features. And now let's go to S Pen, scroll down more S Pen settings, and you should see keep S Pen connected. Now this will incur a little bit of extra battery drain, but basically what it's doing at that point is it's keeping the pin connected even when it's inside the silo so that whenever you pull it out, air gestures are just already ready to go. If you use the gestures a lot, you probably want to turn that on. What about customizing your home screen, right? When you first get this thing, there's some apps on there you want to get rid of them. Maybe you want to delete a whole bunch of things at once. Maybe you want to move a whole bunch of things at once. You can do this. Actually, did not even know about this until fairly recently. What you can do is you can long press an application and now hit select. And then you can select multiple, which you can then remove, create a folder, whatever you want to do from there. That is a really cool feature that I cannot believe I had never noticed. Let's go back into that gallery app because there is another feature that is quite the thing that I have created there. Let's discard this. And let's pull up this picture here. We're gonna use another feature called Object Remover. If you're using a Google Pixel device, it's probably called Magic Eraser for you. Let's click on our little pin. Let's click on the three dots in the corner and let's grab Object Eraser. Now I'm just gonna click on that box there and it should, there we go, we've grabbed all of it. Let's erase it. And that is gone. Now the shadow is still there, but honestly, that's not too bad. Shadows are tricky, but at any rate, click on an object and erase it. And it works really, really well. Back on the home screen, I love having the widgets. And one widget that I really like are smart widgets. So you can see I have my weather there, but if I swipe across it, I've got this brand new battery widget. This is kind of going to be a two in one. So what you can do with these is you can long press and click on create a stack. And then you can add widgets on top that can be scrolled through. Once you're there, you can edit the stack, add more to it, have them rotate automatically. Really, really nice. And there's also this new battery widget, which shows the charge of your devices, right? So you can see there is my phone, my watch, my S Pen, 
And if I open up my Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and they connect, it should pop up automatically on there as well. There it all is. So it's a good way to keep track of all of your battery levels for all of your various Samsung hardware. Let's jump into the camera. You may know this thing now has a 200 megapixel sensor, but of course it does bend down. You can though very, very easily take pictures at the higher resolutions, higher than the 12 that it defaults to. And you can do this by clicking right here. You can change to 50 megapixel mode and 200 megapixel mode. Now, why would you do that? Well, let's take a couple of photo samples and I'll show you. So this is the 12 megapixel default. Let's zoom in and you can kind of see what level of detail we have. If we zoom back out, this is the 50 megapixel version. You can see that it does a worse job of like handling the light there, but you can zoom in quite a bit further because it's just higher resolution and this is the 200 megapixel version and you can get right on up in there and this should clear up in a second you can really see some impressive amounts of dust underneath my uh, strings on my electric guitar that I never play but that's pretty much what the benefit is it's the ability to zoom in much much further although you're probably going to have better handling of bright lights like this HDR stuff with the standard 12 megapixel mode. Now, back in the camera app, if you go to the More button, there's something called Expert Raw. Now, whenever you click on this the first time, it's actually going to take you back to the Galaxy Store to download this. But what this is, is it's a way to shoot your photos in RAW. It's basically like a super duper pro mode. Now, this is not something I'm going to use. I'm not a photographer. I don't really care about shooting in RAW. But one thing that is really, really cool. Look up here in the corner. There is an astrophotography mode that if you click on, not only can you change the duration of the picture up as high as a 10 minute exposure, which is crazy. You can also have it show a star chart. So you're looking up at the sky. It's dark. Maybe you can't really see the stars all that well. But when you look up there, it's going to put the stars in the sky for you and show you what you're looking at. Let me show you what that looks like because I did, in fact, take a screenshot and that is basically what it's going to show you. That is really, really cool. If you want to see some samples of this astrophotography mode, that video would probably be coming down the line, a camera video very, very soon. But that feature is awesome. So sticking with the camera app here, we're now taking a selfie photo. If we click on the little magic wand up here, you can actually go through and change the color tone of the pictures that you are taking. You can actually click on the plus button and create your own filter. You may have noticed that out of the box, you don't have access to the gestures for navigation. You have buttons down here at the bottom, which uh, they suck. I don't want to use buttons. I want to use gestures. It's what my preference is. If you want to change to the gestures, it's pretty simple. Go back into your settings. I think it's under display. Yeah, then scroll down to navigation bar. This will allow you to go from buttons to swipe gestures. Perhaps you are coming from another Android device and you're noticing that all your saved passwords aren't autofilling. Well, that's because you might need to tell it what autofill service to use. So click on search again and this time type in autofill. We're looking for passwords and autofill. It should highlight it down here. Let's click on that again. And for autofill service, click on that and make sure it's set to Google, not Samsung Pass. Now, whichever one you're using, you should select. But I think a lot of Android users probably use Google and are confused when they buy these phones. Why are my passwords not there? That is why. Here's one I had to change. You're going to see that nothing's displaying there. On my phone, whenever it's turned off, I have the always on display turned on all the time. And the reason is because I need it to show me where the fingerprint sensor is. By default, it's just a black screen. And yes, you may learn where that sensor is, but for me, it was a little bit annoying. So what you can do if you want to do this as well is you can scroll down until you see lock screen, click on always on display and change it to either show always or tap to show. Either one of those are going to help you find that fingerprint scanner a little bit easier. If we stay in the lock screen area, this thing does have a slightly less secure than the iPhone, but it does have face unlock. Scroll down to where you see face recognition. Click on that. It's probably going to ask you to enter your pin, which I'm doing now. Black screen on there. And now you can up here, I think it should be, you can add a face and it will scan your face and allow you to unlock using that. And you can also change some of these settings like stay on lock screen until swipe. So do you want to just dismiss the lock screen or not? There are some decent settings you can work on in there as well. Now for these last two, I believe I'm down to the last two. We're going to be using Samsung DeX. 
So we're gonna have to kind of change the camera angle here for these next two. Okay, so I've got two things to quickly show you in Samsung DeX. One is a really nice improvement. So let's open up our Edge browser, which is just my browser of choice. And now we're gonna open up YouTube, which is my YouTube of choice. Now, what you can do, you can already do this. You can split screen apps. Let's drag this over to one side and you should get a little pop-up and then you can click on that. Now you've split screen these apps. The new improvement here that you should definitely be trying not sure why that's there. Okay, let's keep moving. Is before, when you would try to resize a window by, by clicking in the middle and dragging, it would only resize one window, but not the other. Now when you do it, watch this, it actually resizes both, which makes things so much better. Oh my goodness. And there's little hotkeys you can use, like the equivalent of your Windows key, and then either uh, up, down, left, or right to maximize minimize, change what side a uh, an app is on, all really, really useful stuff. Now, another thing that always drove me crazy using Dex that you can absolutely fix is this. So whenever you go to type something on Dex, you may notice that your phone wakes up. And this is really, really frustrating because maybe your phone's in your pocket. Maybe you're using wireless Dex and your phone keeps waking up in your pocket. This is terrible. Well, you can, in fact, fix this. Let's click down here and go to our settings. We're going to click on Samsung DeX. We are going to click on keyboard and then on screen keyboard location, change that from phone to TV or monitor. And that should stop happening. So guys, there you go. 20 of my favorite tips and tricks to use on your brand new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Perhaps you're just watching this video because you're curious about how this phone works. If that's true and you think about purchasing one, there is an affiliate link in the description down below that would help support the channel if you buy it using that. Thanks for watching. Also check out my channel partner, Mint Mobile, to save a ton of money on your cell phone bill also in that description. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.